Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's something in the air tonight. Hallelujah. And it's good. Amen. We're glad you're here tonight. We are so happy for uh, 15th Street has joined us tonight, and there may be others. Maybe this is your, yes, give them a hand. Uh, maybe uh, others from other churches or even maybe a first-time visitor. I don't uh, uh, know everybody here, but we're just so happy that you're here. And we're more than that, we're glad that God is here. And I know he's here because I've already felt him. He is here. His presence is here. I believe tonight, if you have need of anything, I believe tonight is your night. I was talking with somebody in the, uh, in the foyer coming in, and I said, we got the message this morning, and I believe we'll get the miracles tonight. Amen? Hallelujah. Are you ready for that? Yes. Hallelujah. I want to ask Sister Jennifer to come around, and she's going to take prayer requests, and then we'll pray, okay?
God bless you God can you stand on your feet and worship the almighty God hallelujah hallelujah oh God we praise you tonight hallelujah glory to the Lamb of God glory to the Lamb of God Father we praise you we praise you God you are so worthy of our praise God we give you all the honor all the glory all the praise hallelujah hallelujah God work miracles tonight in people's lives God revive this temple tonight oh God revive these people oh God bring us revival that your people may rejoice hallelujah oh God bring revival to this nation hallelujah hallelujah Satan I bind you in every power of hell you have to leave you have to leave these people alone and I release the power of the Spirit of God into their lives right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah glory to the Lamb of God hallelujah oh God please remain standing we're going to go ahead and sing tonight just sing with us okay to the Lamb. He's worthy of our worship tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give Him praise as we come together. Hallelujah. The worship is
me tell you something. Hell can come against you tonight. I don't care. You start raising a hallelujah to God Almighty. Those walls will come falling down. The gates of hell will have to be closed against you in your life. My blessed God, we are a blessed people tonight. And all we've got to do is lift up a, a hand to worship God and start singing hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God bless it, God. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm.
praise tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Well, you can't have this much fun anywhere in the world. Amen. Wow. Welcome. Welcome, Holy Spirit, tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord, tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can be seated if you can. Amen. We're going to take this opportunity to lift an offering here in just a moment. But let me say welcome to everyone. Good to have you in the Lord's house. We've got some visiting ministers here tonight, and I want to make sure I recognize them. And uh, we appreciate all of you being here, and uh, we're excited about revival. We've been praying about it. We know that, and we've, we've heard it often over the years, that a man doesn't bring a revival. You can plan a series of meetings, but it's God when he invades. He invades by his Holy Ghost power. That's what truly brings revival. And the man of God brought a, a strong word to us this morning. We worship and praise. Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. There's so much stuff. You, you, you like me. I've watched so much news. I'm about to, tired of watching it. All that's going on. But I love the good news of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Let me recognize some pastors right quickly. I don't want to make sure I don't miss anybody. Reverend Bobby Conway is here from Aiden Open Door, Open Heart, Heart Church of God. It's good to have Pastor Bobby and his wife, Jenny. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Dale Wallace from 15th Street Church of God is with us tonight. Good to have him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Dale, God bless you. Thank you all for coming, you and your crowd. Amen. We appreciate that. Uh, they had a tremendous move of God a couple of months ago. Brother Danny over there preaching and uh, had, just had a, folks get saved, baptizing folks. Amen. And uh, bless the Lord. Amen. I apologize for being late uh, tonight. I had an a emergency crisis situation I was having to deal with, so I slipped in late and I apologize for that. But we're glad. Let me see. About any other preachers here? I don't want to miss anybody. Any other preacher? All right. Well, we just, well, wherever you're from tonight, and home folks too, we're so glad that you have decided to come and be with us tonight in the house of the Lord. Amen. Now, we're getting ready to lift the offering. What these buckets out here, baskets, whatever they are, what we'll do, we'll start over here. Our musicians will play. They'll start. They'll finish in this section and that section. We're doing it this way because of we're trying to keep everybody separated and, and all that good stuff. How many are tired of hearing about COVID-19, social distancing, mask, and all of that. Well, we don't have to hear about that tonight. We're going to hear some preaching, singing, and worship, and praise. Amen. So thank you for what you're going to give. We want to bless the man of God this week. We want to just pour it out on him, amen, and be a blessing to him, amen. So as soon as they begin playing and singing, whatever they're going to do, we're going to start with this section and go around and use the basket nearest you. God bless you, and thank you for what you're going to give. Praise the Lord. 
Worship with us. The trio is going to lead us out. I'm singing, it only takes a mountain. Amen. Hallelujah. God is at work. a mountain that I never faced before That's why I'm calling on you I know it's been a while but Lord please hear my prayer I need you like I never have before
praise God. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to say it again. I'm in hog heaven. I am in hog heaven. Woo. I'm still going to get a big bus and take this crowd with me. I'm going to take them with me. Oh, what music and what singing. My goodness gracious. I know you're delighted to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I'm not going to have you sit down and get back up, so I'll go ahead and read my text. And as you turn, they're going to have it on the screen, I think, in Acts chapter, John, I'm sorry, John chapter 14. I'm going to read something from Acts, but John chapter 14. I'm going to read several other places. They're going to have several of the scriptures up on the screen tonight. But as you're turning there, or as you're looking there, some of you would like to follow in the scriptures. I need to welcome some people here tonight, too. Thank you, pastors, for coming. I preached a revival a couple of years ago at Open Door. Open Heart, I mean, Open Heart down in Aden. And uh, I'm glad you're here. Glad that Washington Street, uh, 15th Street in Washington, folks are here. I'm actually glad to see some other good folks here, too. Glad you're here. I have to say welcome to two or three groups or people. I had a person come up to me just before church started and said, you probably don't remember me, but I did. We went to state Bible school together back in the, dare I say it, in the 60s. In, in Charlotte, four weeks long in the summertime at the camp meeting. And she's already texted my sister in Wilson, which was a good friend of hers, and, and said, you need to come on down and be here in Revival. But Elaine Staley was Elaine Staley from the church. Elaine, it's good to see you tonight. Thank you for being here. We've been knowing each other a long time, and we're delighted to have the Biggers uh, family here with us tonight. We knew them, my wife and I knew them. Uh, up in Norfolk when I was in the military at the Zaya Garden Church, and they live, I think, about 30 minutes, they said, from here. They've been here before, I believe, Pastor, so they're not a stranger. But raise your hand. We're glad to have the biggers here with us tonight. We're also glad to have the Sangs. If you'll just raise your hand, Brother and Sister Sang. They go to the University Church in Greenville. I met them about a year ago. Uh, next month will be a year, and uh, we've become fast friends, and I had lunch with them yesterday. And we had a wonderful time of fellowship in the afternoon uh, in, between the, in between the walk and praying last night for the three-hour time period that we prayed here. I had lunch with them, and I was still getting over that walk yesterday, but I'm still getting over it today. But uh, I used to have to do that all the time in the military, but I'm not quite as good a shape. I heard round was a shape, and so I guess that's where I am today. i tell you one thing, the way this service started out tonight, I'm going to say something in a few moments about how this service started out tonight. I'm going to say that and, and add that to my message here in just a few moments about how we had a wonderful move of the Spirit right in the very beginning. But let me read Acts chapter, I keep saying Acts, I've got Acts 1 in a few moments, but let me read in St. John, I changed the text for tonight, in St. John chapter 14, verses 10 through 14, believe us thou not that I am in the Father. And Jesus had just told him he was the way, the truth, and the life. And they said, show us the Father, and that will suffice us. But he said, believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. Not greater in quality. Greater maybe in quantity. Because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, God doesn't lie. He doesn't lie. There is a caveat that we go that John adds later to this. In 1 John chapter 5, he says, We know that whatever we ask according to his will, he heareth us. In other words, 
if you want a Cadillac, don't start asking God for it necessarily and think you're going to get a pink Cadillac unless you are in one of these uh, uh, d deals where they sell jewelry or makeup or whatever. What is, some, what is it called? Mary Kay. Yeah. Unless you get involved in that, don't expect a pink Cadillac. I believe tonight that we not only have the message as we preach this morning, but we have the miracles available also. And tonight we're going to continue this with the second and third point. You may be seated on what do we have? What do we have is the title. And you know that came, came from the third chapter of Acts that I read this morning where Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. So we talked this morning about what do we have. I'm not going to revisit that. But we did talk about we have the message for sure. We know the message is true. But do we have the miracles of the Spirit? And I believe we're going to have those this week. In fact, I'm not, I'm not wanting to discard the miracles. We're not seeing them like I'd like to see them. But I'm not going to disregard the miracles because everybody in this building, if you are saved, you're a miracle. You're a miracle if you are born again. What do we have? Well, my wife and I have a friend, and I found out since getting here that she was also a friend, uh, an, an acquaintance to and a friend of your pastor and his wife over in Warrington. She was raised in the Warrington Church and went to leave with us in the 60s, and her name was Linda West. She became Linda Wood. And my wife had lunch with her about once a week with some other ladies affiliated with North Carolina since we live in Cleveland, Tennessee, either from North Carolina or affiliated with North Carolina. And my wife said a lot of times that you were talking to Linda, and I've heard her say it too, she would say, I declare, I declare. And that really is the first word that I want to use tonight we have, what do we have? We have the declaration. We have the declaration. But do we have the demonstration? Do we see the demonstration of the Spirit of God in our midst once we declare the declaration? Now, the, the United States, as you know, has what we call a constitution. But before we had a constitution... We had a declaration of independence, a declaration. In fact, it probably wouldn't hurt most people to read it again. The Declaration of Independence, you know, you know, look over the Constitution. I have a copy of it right here. And in the beginning of this, the Declaration of Independence, it says, when in the course of human events, and it goes on to say you, sometimes you have to dissolve the political bands of which you've been tied to, and then it goes on to say we hold the second verse, or the second verse, yeah, it's not a song, the, the second paragraph says we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the creator with certain unalienable rights, which no one can take them away because God gave them. You see, whatever the government gives you, they can take away. But they can't take away what God gives you. The, the, the song says the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. <laughs> it says we have those unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, that's not, I'm not going to read any further than that. We have a declaration of independence in our country. The church of God also has a declaration. We have what is called the declaration of faith. We have declared some things to be what we believe and some declared some things to be the truth. We have a copy of that right here, the Declaration of Faith, the Doctrinal Commitments, and the Practical Commitments. Well, in the Declaration of Faith, without belaboring the point, it says we believe in some things. Then it goes on to talk about the Doctrinal Commitments based on those 14 points with the Scripture references, and then it talks about our practical commitments, how we live on a daily basis. But what do we believe? What have we declared that we believe? We believe in the verbal inspiration. We believe in one God eternally existing in three persons, that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of the Father. And it goes on to give more. We believe that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We believe in justification, regeneration, a new birth. We believe in sanctification. We believe in holiness to be God's standard of living for His people. We declare that. 
We believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We believe in speaking with other tongues and the Spirit gives utterance and its initial evidence. We believe in water baptism by immersion. And all who are baptized are baptized how? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We believe in, we believe in divine healing is provided for all in the atonement. We also believe the Lord's Supper and the washing of the saints' feet. We believe in the premillennial second coming of Jesus. And we believe in the bodily resurrection, eternal life for the righteous, eternal punishment for the wicked. That is our declaration. We have the declaration, and it's all based on the declaration that's made in this book. We have the declaration. When I was a boy growing up in my home church, in Wilson, North Carolina, it's now called Farmer Heights. But when I was a boy, the church was over on the corner of Woodrow and Lodge Street, called the Lodge Street Church of God. When you walked up those steps to go in that church, and before you got in the door to go in, there was, there was two words above that doorway there, and it was emblazoned on, as part of that building. It was not attached to it. It was part of the building. It had two words. You know what it said? Jesus saves. Jesus saves. The church of God used that quite often over the years. Jesus saves. And I'll tell you one thing, I still believe that. I still believe that Jesus saves. That's the declaration. That is absolutely the declaration about what we believe. But how long has it been? since we've seen the movement of the Spirit of God and demonstration of the Spirit of God and seeing people run down the aisles to the altar and say, what must I do to be saved? I want to see that again. I want to see that again. When I was a 16-year-old lad in that church, I tried, my, I tried my best to live right and somehow I just couldn't get a hold of it. I grew up in that church. My mama, that church was established the year I was born. I don't mind telling you what year it was. It was 19, 1948. I'm 72 years old, in case you're wondering, in case you have trouble with math. I don't look at do it. Thank you. I feel it. There was a group of women one night singing in that church. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. They started singing that song, and God started moving kind of like he did a while ago in the very beginning of this service. I, this is the truth. I was out of my seat halfway down to the altar before I realized I was out of my seat. I wanted to get saved. I wanted God to do something for me. And I tell you, that night, the Lord saved me and sanctified me and filled me with the Holy Ghost as a 16-year-old boy. And I tell you, it's not been easy treading all along ever since. It's never been easy all along as far as just having the joy of the Lord all the time. But I tell you one thing, I made up my mind that night I was going to serve the Lord. I not only believed that declaration, I saw the demonstration of the Spirit of God in my life. And I want to see that demonstration of the the Spirit of God in your life. You say, you're going to never get to your text here on the third point. I believe in the demonstration. What happens when we declare the Word of God? What happens in people's lives? You see, when you get saved, you are pardoned. You're justified. When you get sanctified, you become pure and holy before the Lord. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the power, so you have the pardon, you have the purity, and you have the power, and it's all by the grace of God, all by the demonstration of the Spirit of the Lord in your life when you receive the, the declaration that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Are you glad he saves? I had somebody come up to me after church today. I'm not going to call names or anything like that and said, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I'm telling you I needed that message this morning. See, so that's how God works. I needed that message this morning. And we all know that we need to hear the truth. We need to hear what the power of God is in our lives. I, I read a book recently. I showed it to your pastor yesterday. And I, I had, as I told you, I had lunch yesterday with the Sayings, and we talked about this book that I mentioned. Uh, and, they, and Brother Sayings went, they they went off and got that book. I mentioned it in a revival. They were with me back in August in Goldsboro and uh, called Not a Fan. I heard about this book several years ago and didn't get interested in it at that point. Anybody ever read Not a Fan besides them? 
I see one or two other hands. They, they uh, got interested in this book when I mentioned it. They both read it, and I think he went out and bought about 10 or 12 of them and given them away. This book was written by the pastor, an associate pastor, a teaching pastor at the fifth largest church in America in Kentucky named Adelman, Kyle Adelman. He was in a church one day in that hard, large sanctuary in Kentucky. Three or four days before Easter, it was his turn to preach. Trying to decipher what, and trying to decide before the Lord. He was sitting there thinking and praying before the Lord what he was going to preach. By the way, Brother Kenny, if I ever get stopped by a highway patrolman, I hope he's like you. A tongue talking, ex highway patrolman, former highway patrolman, retired. I hope I get, I hope I get stopped like one like him. He was sitting there contemplating his message. And he picked up the Bible and began to read. He began to read about how we've got to deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow him. He said, I started weeping. He said, I started crying before the Lord, realizing that I had not really been a true follower, disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, that I had only been a fan for a long time. Not a fan. And here's, here's what the back says. One, one writer that wrote about the book says, Jesus never asked us to sit on the sidelines and cheer for his causes. Are you a fan or a follower? The, the, the writer says, the dictionary defines a fan as an enthousi enthusiastic admirer. Fans want to be close enough to Jesus to get all the benefits, but not so close that it requires sacrifice. Somebody asked Franklin Hunt years ago when he was doing revivals for six weeks at the time in the church of God, and he said, he said, Brother Hunt, what kind of fits do you Pentecostal people have? He said, benefits. I love the benefits. But you're not going to get the benefits just being a fan. He went on to say, Fans may be fine with repeating a prayer, attending church on the weekend, slapping a Jesus fish on their bumpers, but is that really the extent of the relationship Jesus wants? Jesus was never interested in having admirers. It's not fans he's looking for. I'm telling you, the only way we're going to see the demonstration of the, of the Spirit of God after we've had the declaration is for God's people to get out of the fan section and get on the firing line for the Lord and become, and become really, really involved in what the kingdom of God is about in this world and be a true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and not only then will we have the declaration we will have the demonstration of the Spirit. I told y'all would say something about how this service started. And I was growing up in that Wilson church Five o'clock on Sunday afternoon, not a revival either, just a regular service time. I was still a teenager. You drive up on that church ground at five o'clock on Sunday for the six o'clock worship service. By that time of day, the men's prayer room was full, the women's prayer room was full, and people were crying out to God for the service, and you could hear them outside. And you know what? They prayed sometimes so much that they couldn't even start church. There weren't enough people in there to start church. Once in a while they started, people would trickle in. You say, you mean to tell me that's in order? Praying's in order anytime. I'll never forget that. You say, why is that important? I'm 72 years old and I'll never forget it. I know prayer works. But you're not going to have the demonstration of the Spirit of God by just running into church on Sunday morning and sitting down and saying, I'm here for an hour, Lord, and that's all I'm going to give you, but I feel pretty good about it. I'm telling you, some people in that upper room tonight, the sisters opened up the prayer tonight. Weren't you in the upper room? Were you not in the upper room? Somebody was. So someone, there's four or five people up there a while ago when I was up there. I'm you say, why, why did that service start like that? I remember services starting like that a many a time when I was growing up. The Holy Ghost moved on her a while ago, and not only that, but she gave some prophetic utterances as she was after she was speaking in tongues about the Spirit of God, and people came down and we want to have one altar service. You won't even hear. The pastor won't even hear. He didn't care enough about it, he didn't come. He was busy. He was doing what a pastor needed to be. You've got a great pastor in his family. You've got a great pastor. I'm glad to be here with you. We, you see, Pentecostals don't all, always have 
a set pattern to the way we do things. We may, you see, God has a plan. We've got our programs, and the devil has his plot against you. The devil is plotting against you. We've got our church plans that we do, but oh, the Holy Ghost filled people that can get out of the way of a plan and of our program and let the plan of God take over in our midst. Praise God. I'll guarantee you the Spirit of the Lord will do that this week. Yeah, it's okay to have you. I pastored. I know what it's like to have a program and what you've got in mind, but God's always got a plan because God knows what's going on. He knows what kind of demonstration that needs to be done in every service. Now, when Jesus left, this is something I was talking with the brother and sister saying about yesterday. When, when, and, and when Jesus left this earth, he gave his disciples some orders. He said, I'm going to go away. It's expedient for you to go away. He said, but you've got to go to Jerusalem. Don't go out here first and start witnessing until you get in due with power of on high. Acts 1.8. And... Now, they had three choices. You've got three choices. They had three choices. One, they could have said, okay, we don't have your physical evidence, your physical presence anymore. We're just not quite sure we want to do this anymore. So we think we'll go back to our old lives, go back fishing, tax collecting. Our career with the man we just knew was going to be our Savior is over. He died on the cross. His career is over, and we're going to go back to our old life. Brothers and sisters, don't anybody go back to your old life. Or we can decide to try to carry out this mission he gave us in our own power. In our own power. You said the man just didn't bring a revival. You're right. I pray all the time. God sent a revival that no man can bring and no man can stop. And here, listen, I don't have the ability to give you a revival. I've got the, the anointing of God on me, the inspiration of God to study and pray and fast and get ready for revival and then preach what God gives me and pray that God will take that and do the inspirational stuff in people's lives. They could, they could actually go back to their old life. They could carry on without the, without the power of the Holy Ghost or they could go do what Jesus told them and receive the power so that they could see the demonstration of the Spirit of God like we preached here this morning where that man was healed. When Peter prayed, silver and gold have I none. Happened all the time. Jesus touched people all the time. And they were made whole. You know, the disciples must have been wondering, how are we going to make it without Jesus? We need his presence. We need his presence with us. But what did Jesus tell them? He said, it's good for you that I'm going away. And John 16 and 7, he said, because the comforter, I'll send you another comforter. I'll send you another comforter. Now, some of you probably have read Robert Morris's works. He has a television program. Robert Morris wrote the book, The Blessed Life, several years ago. And uh, he wrote a book about the, the, the presence of the Holy Ghost and receiving the Holy Ghost. And he told a story in there about the comforter. He said, my wife and I, when we first got married, we didn't have very much. And he said, we, we live day to day, week to week, day to day. He said, we li- it was cold. He said, where we lived, it was cold. He said, and, and the, the blanket we had on the, back on the, in the end of our bed was getting so threadbare, you could read a newspaper through it. He said, it was awful. He said, we stayed cold. He said, finally, my wife talked me into going down and buying a comforter for that bed. He said, I, I, I agreed to it. He said, but I didn't know we was going to have to take out a mortgage to pay for it. He said, we went down there and looked for that comforter. He said, and my wife found one she liked. And he said, 
Oh, I can just see it now in his eyes. I can just, in my mind, I can see it now. I will get home. I'm going to get down. I'll scooch down under that thing. He said, I'm going to get warm. He said, I've been cold, and now I'm going to be warm. And I told her that and said, she looked at me. Only like a wife can look at a husband when he's just said something stupid. She said, you're not going to get to sleep under that. That comforter's for show. That's for show. My wife warns me all the time, if you go stay in somebody's home, please watch out for the towels that you use in the bathroom, his and hers. You know you've got them. The ones you're not supposed to use? The ones that's for show? Let me tell you something. This comforter that Jesus told about, whoo, was not a comforter, that's for show. Jesus said, I'm going to send you another comforter, and he'll abide with you how long? How long? Forever. I tell you one thing, I feel that comforter right now. I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in my sanctified soul. Let me tell you, he's not for show. He will show himself real, but he's not for show. You don't show off the presence of God. You just thank God for it and bask in it. Praise God for the comforter who comes to us and demonstrates himself to us. In the Old Testament, God was in the camp. Now God is in us in the New Testament. Somebody said it like this, if God is for us and Jesus has redeemed us and lives in us and the Holy Ghost lives within us and angels all around us, how in the world can we go wrong? How can we go wrong? Thank God for something. I wish I could have lived, somebody said, in, under the Old Testament prophets. I wish I could have been like David and lived like David. I wish I could have been like Moses. I wish I could have lived like Elijah. Let me tell you something. God was with them, but he is in us. He was with them, but he is in us. Jesus said the Holy Ghost will, shall be with you and shall be in you. Thank God for the demonstration of the Spirit of God. Thank God when people receive tongues and experience in their life when they receive the Holy Ghost. That is a gift. You do not have to beg for it. The Holy Ghost is a gift from God. If you come down here and pray for the Holy Ghost, let me just tell you a couple things about me. I'm not going to pat you under the tongue and say, that's it, under the chin and say, that is your chin. I'm, I'm not going to pat you under your chin and say, that's it, that's it, that's it. The Holy Ghost has been baptizing people for 2,000 years. And let me tell you something. When he comes in, he'll come in fluently. You don't have to beat it into him. You don't have to. People used to say, well, I, I love our church of God. I love our church of God tradition, our church of God history. But years ago, people would get on one side of a person and say, hold on. The other side, turn loose. Hold on. Turn loose. How in the world do you know what to do? I'm telling you, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily take that. Thank God for pure people praying in the altar for people. But when and the Holy Ghost comes in his demonstration. He will demonstrate himself because he's the third person in the Godhead. He's the third person in the Godhead. He don't need your help. I'll tell you something else I'm not going to do. I'm not going to knock you down when I pray for you. In fact, you might sue me if you get hurt. Uh, listen, listen, if the Holy Ghost puts you down, that's one thing. But I ain't going to knock you down. That's not my calling. My calling is to preach to you and let the Holy Ghost do his work. He said, I'll convince of sin and righteousness and judgment. About half of you won't come back to tomorrow night now. I know you will. But listen, we, God don't need our help. He just needs our obedience. Acts chapter 4, I think they have that text up there, that scripture, Acts chapter 4. If you'll put that on the screen, Acts chapter 4 and verse 7 following. I want to read it from, from the scripture here. Acts chapter 4, verse 7 following says, What kind of demonstration? When, and when they had set them in the midst... These are Peter and John after the, after the miracle I preached about this morning. They were asking them the question, 
by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, you rulers and people of Israel and elders of Israel. Then he went on to say, in the name of Jesus Christ is how we've done this. This is the stone. He's the, the head. He's become the head of the corner. And then he says a verse everybody ought to be able to quote, neither is thou salvation in any other. Neither is thou salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's only one Savior. There's only one Holy Ghost. There's only one God, and we believe in one God existed in three persons. Thank God for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I tell you one thing, the Holy Ghost is in this place tonight. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's been here from the very get-go. I tell you somewhere else he was. He was in the upper room before church started. I believe you folks are fired up. Boy, if you're not fired up, you're sure putting on a good show. I, I read a story about an atheist who lived in a small country community years ago, and it's a lot of people have tried, Pastor, to get him to come to church. They've tried their best to get him to come to church. He wouldn't come. This was a place where they had volunteer fire people department. One night the church caught on fire in that little community. And everybody came running, driving, and everybody was carrying buckets of water. I mean, they were handing buckets of water off trying to get the fire out. The fire church was on fire, trying to, trying to get the, the, the fire out with all those little buckets. And all of a sudden, one man that had been trying to witness to that atheist turned around, and there came that atheist running behind him with a bucket of water. Oh, yes, he, he, he and, and they were running, I'm sure, if they were like me walking this day, they were half <laughs> They, they were, you know, they, they were just running with those buckets of water. He turned to that old agent and said, "My goodness, man, I've, I've tried to get you to come to this place for years." He said, I, "You haven't budged about coming here." He said, "What are you doing here tonight?" He said, "The big difference is I've never seen the church on fire before. Never seen the church on fire before, but the church is on fire tonight. So I'm here. Let me tell you something. You get the church on fire. You get the church on fire with the demonstration of the power of God. People will walk through those doors that you wouldn't think would come here. They'll walk through those." doors and come to this place if you get the church on fire and not only inside here but take it outside take it outside take it outside that's what's got to happen this church is not only going to be blessed this week this community needs to be blessed Woo. I, had, I, I had Romans chapter 8 verse 11 do you have that up there Romans chapter 8, verse 11, if you don't have it off. Yeah, there it is. What kind of spirit have we got in us to cause these demonstrations after we have the declaration? It's the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. you got, you got to think about that for a moment. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. You know you've got to have something different in you if the Lord comes and takes us away. You've got to have something different in you to get caught away. You've got the Spirit of Christ in you. I don't know how, how often you think of that, but you've got a treasure inside of you. Kind of lost as a goose on what time it is. Ten minutes to eight, but it's caught in here, but I know it's fast. It's about 30 minutes fast, isn't it? Whew. Not only do we have the message, we need to see the miracles. Not only do we have the declaration, we need to see the demonstration. We have, thirdly, and I'll, I'll be brief on this, we have the words. We have the words. But do we have the works of the Spirit? We have the words. But do we have the works? You say, well, I have faith. We know James talked about that in chapter 2. In fact, before I tell you that, let me tell you, you ever heard the name Martin Luther? You ever heard the name Martin Luther? Protestant Reformation? Martin Luther said that he didn't leave the Catholic Church. He said the Catholic Church left him. And 
he did not like the book of James because Martin Luther got tired of thinking people think you could be saved by works, works theology. He, he, he didn't like that. So there's some of that works business in the book of James. And so he said that the book of James was kind of a straw epistle. In other words, what worth it could kind of blow away. But I, we, many people think, and I do, I think he misunderstood the book of James. What does it profit, my brethren? If a man say he hath faith and not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of the daily food, and he goes on to say, Be ye warmed and filled, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yes, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show thee thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying we have the words of eternal life in this book. We have the words of Jesus. But do we see the works of the Spirit that Jesus told us about? Let's go back to John chapter 6, if you will. If you have, he's, got, I don't, he's got this up there that I, that I give them to you. John chapter, boy, they, they're on the ball up there. They're good. In fact, I walked up there before church after I prayed and saw two or three of those brothers up there, and I said, I see how the, how the other half lives now. Up, up in the upper room, but they're all the time. John chapter 6, the people wanted to know from Jesus, verse 28, they said unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus asked and said to them, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him who have sent. Jesus, what Jesus was saying, the work of God, simple as this, that you believe. That you believe. And your faith then, your belief in your faith will do more. And if somebody's hungry around you, you're going to do more than say be warmed and filled. When you've got the words in you, you're going to do something about it. You're going to have compassion. And you're going to do something for that person to, and do more than warmed and filled. How many of you remember seeing the Samaritan's First Hospital in New York during this COVID business? Before they were there, they went to Italy. The man that set that hospital up, primarily the one that was in charge of it, was in Italy and then in New York. And did you know people said they shouldn't be there? They said ugly things about them, protested. The man that set that up, his name is Ken Isaacs. They had an article about him in the Billy Graham magazine. And here's what Ken Isaacs said. He said, the gospel in word and deed are inseparable. He said, we get a chance to preach the gospel to people. But many times you have to help them physically first. He said, the gospel in deed, in word and deed, are inseparable. Now, that was a, a, also experienced in John chapter 6, if they have that, verse 63. That was an experience where Jesus had just told the people, he said, you've got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Now, that's in a lot of monkers. What are you talking about? And, it's, and it bothered them so much. You're going to see in a minute how much it bothered them. But Jesus said in verse 63, I'm talking about the word. We have the words, but do we have the works of the Spirit? It is the Spirit that quickeneth the flesh. Oh, it is the Spirit that quickeneth. Let me, let me be sure I put a semicolon there. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. If you get the feeling the Spirit of God in this service and you just feel like you've got to run like some people have here today, that's the Spirit that quickens you to do that. If you need to stand up and give a message in tongues or an interpretation of the tongues, the Spirit quickeneth you to do that if you're full of the Spirit and operate in the gifts of the Spirit. He said, the flesh profiteth nothing. I can get up here and preach to you all night long in the flesh and it ain't going to do a thing. The words, we got the words, but do we have the works? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Why? Because the Holy Ghost 
takes those words and drives it in the heart of people just like a spiritual nail. And that's what draws people, not the preacher, not the singers. Oh, it may, it may certainly help, but the Spirit of God is what draws people when the Word is preached, when the Word is sung. The Spirit of God is what draws people with the Word. He said, he said it again. He said that I speak unto you the words. They are spirit and they are life. Somebody said, do you believe in zombies? I believe in zombies. I do. Because at one time in your life, you were walking around dead. He quickened a few. You were dead where? In your trespasses and sins. So don't you tell me there's not zombies. People walking around out there today with, with life in them, they're still walking zombies because they, don't, they got death in them. They don't have life in them. Woo, I got life in me tonight. Woo, I tell you, my 72-year-old body's aching, but I got life in me tonight because the Word of God will stir you up enough that you can know that the Spirit of God is real in your life. Whew. Chapter 6 again, verse 68. This is where, where it got him really good. When Jesus said, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Then Simon Peter, the Lord said, are you going to also, some of them, a bunch of them turned around and walked away. They were probably, you know what they were? They were fans. Jesus said, you're not following me because you want to hear what I say. You're following me because you want your stomach full. You want your stomach full. I've seen people that can only live for the Lord when times were bad. Then I've seen people that can only live for the Lord when times were good. When times were good, boy, they were shouting. When times got tough, they didn't come to church. And then there's some people that only time it was good, they'd be right there. Then when times, and when people were, were bad, they absolutely, when bad, oh, they could they'd turn to the Lord. Then, oh, yeah, some people turn to the Lord when times are good. Some people turn to the Lord when times are bad. The Lord wants you to serve him regardless of the circumstances. And Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You say, oh, my day's been bad. My week's been bad. My six months has been bad. Oh, this virus stuff has been about to drive me crazy. Let me tell you something. We've all been kind of in the same, I don't know whether you call it a boat or not. We've all been kind of in the same predicament. But where else are you going to turn if you don't turn to the Lord? I'm closing. You know, most Church of God preachers have about four closings. You say, yeah, I know. John 15 and 5 says, apart from me, you can do nothing. He's divine with the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And I know one thing. I can't preach to you this week and have a revival unless the Spirit of God touches me. You can't have revival if the Spirit of God don't touch your ears. I'll tell you one way for sure you can't have revival if you're not here. Let me close. If you'll get ready to play. Get ready to play. How many of you know, how many of you like salads? You like a salad? I used to eat them dry. I didn't, I didn't like dressing. I used to eat them dry years ago. And I found out the dressing made it taste good. I like Thousand Island. Anybody else like Thousand Island? Oh, you're saved. Woo, you're saved. Salad and dressing go together, doesn't it? What, and, and, you know, you can have a salad. Well, I guess you could eat dressing if you wanted to by itself. Some people probably do. How many of you know the fries go with ketchup? How many of you don't like ketchup on your fries? Get out of town. My wife likes to dip hers in mustard. I'll eat them without ketchup, but I don't like it. Fries and ketchup go together. 
How many of you know ham and eggs go together? You can have ham and you can have eggs, but they sure are good together. Now, the serious part. How many of you know that praying and fasting go together? Woo! Praying and fasting go together. Praying and fasting go together, and so does faith and works. I told you this morning we believe the church of God believes in believers, signs following believers, but we don't believe in believers following signs. Signs and believers go together. Signs following believers, works can't do anything by itself. You can't do enough work to save your soul. You can't do enough work by yourself. But prayer, if you've got prayer and you've got faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the works will follow that. The works in the Lord. We've got the words, but do we have the works? I believe we do in this place. What do we have? I mentioned today, what do we have? What do we have and what do we have? Or do we have this? The message and miracles, the declaration and the demonstration, the words and the works. What do we have tonight that's going to help us? We have the name of Jesus. None other name. None other name. What do we have? We have the power of the Spirit. If you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, let me urge you in this revival to come down and get serious about it. I know I've seen people pray for the Holy Ghost and they and they act like they go back in their seat and sit down and say, Woo, I'm glad that's over. Brothers and sisters, when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, it's just beginning. Oh, the joy and the journey is just beginning. It's a joy to be full, to be saved, and to be sanctified, and to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We also have been given, we have the ability and the availability by the power of the Spirit to do the works that Peter did, to do the works that John did, to do the works they did in the New Testament. You say, oh, no, that was just for then. Well, I'm telling you one thing. The way you're acting here today, it's not just for then. Would you stand? Boy, you're glad to hear those words, aren't you? Now, if you'll play, Sister Ellen. How many of you have ever heard show and tell? Show and tell? Did that in school? Your grandkids do it in school? Your kids do it in school? Show and tell? What I'm preaching about tonight is the opposite of that. This is called tell and show. Tell the message. And then the Lord shows the miracles. Tell the message. Then the Lord shows the miracles. The world says, show me and I'll believe it. Jesus says, believe me and I'll show you. Believe me. And I'll show you. I had something I was going to give you by Oswald, by Vance Havner, but I'm not going to do that. I just want to give you the words as I close of a word, of, of a verse and a course of a song by the Boland family. You got to run and tell. The course says, I got to run and tell what he's done for me. I got to spread the word so the world has heard how he set me free. My feet pick up the pace when I tell about his grace. I can't stand in just one place. I got to run and tell. And then that, the verse 2, I want to tell you, because it goes along with this. Paul was preaching to a crowd one morning, and in that crowd a crippled man was laid. He listened and by faith believed. The message he had heard, the message that he heard, with the ears, spoken with the mouth, heard with the ears. He leaped into the air. He left his crutches there and ran to show the miracle God made. You see, it's important to proclaim the word, the message. But then we can see as they saw that man running and leaping and praising God into the temple in Acts chapter 3 when Peter had prayed for him serving gold have I none 
They saw the results of the message. Father, Father, my Father, my Father, my Father, my Lord, my Savior, my King, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You moved in our midst in the very beginning, even with a time of altar praying for people that had needs. You moved upon us, Lord, with tongues and prophetic words. People have run in this place today, this morning and tonight. There may be somebody here tonight that doesn't have that kind of joy. Lord, if there's a backslider here tonight that has departed from the faith, will you bring them home? If there's a sinner in this place that's never been saved, or maybe somebody's just grown cold in the journey, they've got weary, they, 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 every, life circumstances have derailed them, Lord, will you bring them in? Will the Holy Ghost go forth right now? along with everything that's been said and done here tonight in this service since 6.30. People in the church that need to be revived. They're not backslidden, Lord. They're, they're not sinners. They're not bad people. They just need to be revived. Will you touch people now, Lord, by your grace? And I would ask as every head is bowed, if you can want to sing something, if you want to sing something, as every head sings softly, as every head is bowed, if there's one person in this building that would say, I'm not saved, this is Revival Church, I'm not saved, and, and oh, I've grown back on, on the Lord, I, I'm cold and I'm weary, and I need the Lord to touch me tonight, is there one that would slip your hand up first of all and say, I need God, I need the Lord to touch me, would you do that right now? Would you have the boldness to do that? I'm not going to embarrass you. I can tell you that. I see the hand. I see the hand in the back. I see the hand in the church. Is there another one? I'm not going to embarrass you. I don't believe in doing that unless the Lord, unless the Lord directly directs me to somebody. I don't draw people out. Is there another? Is there another? Is there, is there one more? I don't, I don't tarry too long and beg. I don't beg people. The Holy Spirit's work is doing. He's going to do what he's going to do. And I don't beg people. Go sing, please. There is power in the if anybody here needs to be sanctified or delivered from habits or hang-ups or addictions, we can see a miracle here tonight. We can see a miracle here tonight. We can see a miracle here tonight. If anybody needs a baptism, how many of you will be honest with yourself and me that you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Raise your hand. You've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you. Would you would you come and pray tonight at this altar for the baptism of the Holy Ghost? We're not gonna we're not gonna try to beat you and beat it into you. I'm going to pray with you. I know we have to be careful with COVID. We have to be careful about how we pray. I know that. And I'm going to honor that. This brother, this brother here needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This brother is coming. He needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want somebody to come and pray with him. All of these. I know you can't. I don't want you to get too close to their face. But I do want somebody to come and stand behind this brother and pray with him to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I do want you to come and pray with them. Don't let anybody be here by themselves. But you, somebody's going to pray with them. I'm going to anoint every one of them. Anybody else? All right, I want everybody that wants to come pray. Please come pray, church. Come pray for revival. Come pray for renewal. And pray with these that are in this
this altar tonight. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if God would baptize every one of them with the Holy Ghost tonight? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Would you come? Please, church, this is revival time. This is revival time. Please come, church. Please come. Please come. Come to this altar. Please pray where you are. Please pray where you are. Please pray where you are. Please pray where you are.
Sport. I know everybody can't be down here, but we've got at least three still praying for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. At least three. I want you to raise your hand, lift your hand this way, and ask God to fill these three people. What if we'd have a revival already tonight and three people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And four, and four, there's more than three, there's four at least. We're praying for the Holy Ghost. Lift your hand this way and pray for him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, brother, receive ye the Holy Ghost tonight with initial evidence of speaking in a heavenly language tonight. Oh, yes, the Holy Ghost will come in fluently. I don't have to beat him into you. He'll come in fluently tonight. Yes, he will.
church. How many of you remember when you received the Holy Ghost? Are you glad somebody prayed with you and for you? Well, that's why they need. They need encouragement. They're not seeking tongues. They're seeking the Holy Ghost. And the tongues comes as initial evidence. Because tongues is the initial evidence. There's a whole lot more to the Holy Ghost than just receiving the tongues. But that's the initial evidence the Church of God teaches. It's the initial evidence. It's the first evidence. But there's, they're looking to receive the fullness of the Spirit that Jesus said they shall receive, that shall be with them, and shall be in them. So he's been with you, and now it's time for him to be in you. Amen. Do y'all believe that? You didn't pray for the Holy Ghost. You believe that it's time for him to be in you. Pray for that fullness, and the tongues will come. When you have faith, I can't give it to you. Nobody can give it to you. But I can tell you one thing. There's some people standing behind you that come up again and lay their Come on, church. Lay your hands on these again. Lay, oh, we got, to, we got to support them. Lay your hands on them again. Lay your hands on them again. Don't let them be defeated. Don't let them walk out of here without receiving.
received the Holy Ghost tonight. Nicole received the Holy Ghost tonight. Oh, yes, isn't that wonderful? Unfortunately for her husband, he's working tonight, but he's going to be excited. Brother, both of y'all are going to receive the Holy Ghost this week. Do you believe that? Have you ever had the Holy Ghost at all in the back? back? What about you, sir? Do you believe the Holy Ghost? You wouldn't, you wouldn't be up here if you didn't, right? But listen, don't seek for tongues. Seek for the infillment of the Spirit. The third, See, the Holy Ghost is scriptural. The Holy Ghost is real. The Holy Ghost is necessary. And the Holy Ghost is powerful in your life. Seek to have that comforter to dwell within you. And when he comes in, when he comes in, I'll guarantee you, I'll guarantee you, he will manifest through the tongues and spirits. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Not my guarantee, but guarantee of the Lord. He told him, you shall, you shall receive power. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You should be my witnesses. Yeah. Nicole, isn't it wonderful? Is it wonderful? Woo, she can't even talk. She can't even talk. You've heard that song, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. She can't even talk without you holding my hand. Can't even talk. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. I tell you, I believe we ought to just praise the Lord again for her receiving the Holy Ghost tonight. Praise the Lord. These two brothers right here. Brother, tell me your first name again. Jay, and your first name? Dual. Tool. Spell it for me. Got it now. Got it. I had a hard time. I'm, I'm about half deaf in this left ear. Reach your hand this way right now. You, do both, both everybody here know their names? Pardon? This is your son right here? Are you sure? Oh. And that's yours. You, his mama says he was. All right. I want you to lift your hands right now and pray for both of them. For Jay and Tool. In the name of Jesus. Touch Jay. Touch Tool. Touch him tonight. Lord, they're going to receive the Holy Ghost in this church services this week. They're going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. They're going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Receive the Holy Ghost in this revival. Receive the Holy Ghost in this revival. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You're not tired, are you? Now listen, I'm going to say one more thing and sit down. It's been a long time. In fact, I don't remember the last time that I've had a revival start out like this. I've been started my 15th year about 10 days ago. I don't remember, maybe ever, one starting out like this. My Lord, we've been waiting six months, haven't we? Yeah. You, you prayed you prayed and fasted before, before the one that's supposed to be in March. Yeah. And all that prayer you prayed, we prayed and prayed again. I believe God bottled all those prayers up in heaven. He just poured them out now. He just poured them out. Brother, you better come get this microphone. Are you, are you too tired? No. He's tired. He's had a long day. You've been doing all the work. I'll just take this and amen. Praise the Lord. Wow, what a what amazing presence of the Lord tonight. Amen. Uh, all right, brother, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Praise the Lord. Let's 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 direct one more prayer toward Lisa. She's seeking a healing in her body. This man's preaching. Remember what he said. Signs followed them that believe we believe tonight the word's been gone out god confirm your word with signs following amen father we pray already prayed twice we lift her up again lord god
Thank you for what you're doing. Spiritual surgery in this service, in her heart, in her life. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, by your stripes, by your stripes we were healed, Lord. By your stripes we are healed. Father, you're the great physician. We love you tonight, God. Thank you for what has been accomplished in this place. We'll praise you and thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name. All right, here's what we're going to do. Tomorrow night the service starts at 7.30. I know that's a little late for some of you with children that have to go to school. And I guess most of you, like our young ones, doing school at home. Others are not. If you can, we want people to come out and pray. I'm going to ask you, when we come in this sanctuary, if you want to come and pray early, the upper room is going to be available to be for prayer. Let's get our minds on the Lord. Let's not talk about ball game, fishing, or hunting, or whatever. Let's get our minds on the Lord. Let's prepare our hearts in preparation. So many times we feel like we can come in here and turn it on or off, you know, talk about everything under the sun. I'm not saying it's sinful, it's wrong. And all of a sudden just want the Lord to turn it on. God, I wasn't here. I was taking care of something. I was coming in, trying to get here, and I heard y'all having camp meeting right without me. That's the way that's the way services ought to start. They ought to start that way. It's not the that's not the exception that ought to be the rule. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but I thank God for what he's done. I thank God for all the preachers that have showed up. I did overlook uh, Brother Charles and Nancy, right? Sarver, S-A-R-V-E-R. Brother Charles, I'm going to have you come and dismiss. Come on up here, brother. Come on. Come on up here. Got a singing group tomorrow night. Amen. Brother, um, yes, sir. Brother Fraley.